Hi, welcome to the train room. It's December and it's snowing outside, but that's okay. It's nice and warm in my basement. And for my next project, I am going to work on the gravel loader opposite the pulpwood yard. This is a project that I have been looking forward to for some time, but have not been in a position to start working on it just yet. Anyway, let me jump right into the construction and I will walk you along as we go. Before we start, how about a preview picture? The goal here has always been to have a working gravel loader so that I can bring in empty hopper cars, actually load them with gravel and then take it back to staging. The spur that the loader is on is long enough to take four cars, two in front of the loader and two on the tail track. Of course having a gravel loader on the layout isn't going to be a lot of use unless I have some cars for it to load. Anyway, more than a year ago, I purchased the cars that I need. I have here a dozen Bowser two bay hoppers, which I really like by the way. They went together very easily. And I managed to find the data only cars, so all I've got to do is put my own custom decals on. Well, here is my test rig or the prototype if you like. I have a rough mock-up of a hopper. The mechanism has been constructed from various sizes of brass and then I have a crank at the bottom and a return spring and by pressing the lever the push rod lifts the door. On the layout, obviously, I will need a horizontal motion, so this will be some kind of crank down the bottom, but that I can figure out nearer the time. The purpose of this test rig is to get the mechanics of the system working. Although I don't plan on running locomotives under the loader, I need to make sure that if someone does, it's not going to foul the chute. So here we have enough clearance. I tested this area with a locomotive because I knew that it was well inside the loading gauge. If I had pushed the structure far enough up and back to miss the gauge altogether, then it would have needed to be so far away from the hopper car that I would have got a lot more gravel bouncing out, and I didn't want that. So that's why I just used actual locomotives to make sure it, it just missed by an eighth of an inch or so. For the stones, I am using a cheap kitty litter that I found. I got it at Walmart for just over a dollar, and I sifted all the larger chunks out, so I'm left with just the small pieces. Okay, I am going to call that a success. I do need to adjust it a little bit. The pile is slightly off center, so I need to move it away from the track maybe another sixteenth of an inch. I do need to make one fundamental change to the test rig. If you look inside, you will see the corner slope plates stop well short of the center, which means that when the hopper is nearly empty, there's a whole lot of gravel that doesn't come out. So I need to make sure that the point 
goes all the way to the door. I'm going to make the change on the test rig just in case the reduced friction from the smooth slope plates causes the gravel to come out faster or in a different trajectory. I don't think it should make a significant amount of difference but just in case I'm going to make the change now before I start constructing the real model. Okay, I've modified the hopper. Now if you look closely you'll see that the side slope plates go all the way to the door opening. Let's reassemble the test rig and see if that makes any difference. Well, it seems to be about the same. I'm just emptying the train now so that I can try again and see if it makes any difference when the hopper is just about out of gravel. Just a little jolt from closing it made all the difference with uh, emptying the rest of it.